This week on the Anxiety Slayer podcast, we're discussing the fear of good things turning bad or not lasting, also known in some circles as waiting for the other shoe to drop. Welcome back to another episode, Ananga. It's so good to be with you today. Hey, Shen. This feeling anxious when things are going well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a very relatable experience. It's very common. So if it's happening for you, please know that you're not alone. Yeah, it's almost like we have this scanner in our, that we're just scanning looking for something that might go sideways, whether it be mental, physical, something happening in your family or whatever it is, just looking, 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 constantly scanning that hypervigilance uh, Mm. just causes so much dread and anxiety. And I'm glad that we're going to be rolling through some of the suggestions and ideas that we have to help move past that. Yeah. It's a very difficult experience, and it's something that really can come crashing in on a happy moment, a peaceful day, a significant event where you're coming together with loved ones and everything's fine and it's where you love to be, and then this shadow anxiety can come in, and it's a very difficult experience. And then we had a a group question come in that was the catalyst for our conversation today and that said, I struggle with what my counselor has called anticipatory grief, where I almost try to imagine the pain I'll feel at the loss of a loved one in the hope that it will prepare me. Needless to say, this causes anxiety. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, I know, I know what that is. Not necessarily around the loss of somebody that I love, but a number of other areas, whether it be an illness, whether it be something happening to my son, you know, whatever comes in and that anticipatory grief, like, okay, well, if we prepare for this, then perhaps we'll be able to get through it with more ease and grace. Yeah. And I think it's related to this experience of, you know, when we say waiting for the other shoe to drop or this anticipating something terrible is going to happen in the middle of a perfectly blue sky day when there's no evidence, hard evidence around to suggest something really heavy is about to happen. And this is something I experienced a fair bit as a child when I was suffering with very strong anxiety, particularly from about the age of 10. I can remember being really anxious. And as I got older, the experience I had, I started to call an anxiety tax paid in advance. So one example would be my parents would be out for the evening. I had a lovely uncle that would babysit me. He lived with us for a while when I was younger and I was very comfortable with him, but he'd be just watching something on TV. And um, I would sit on the bottom of the stairs waiting for my parents to come home. Now, knowing them, they were home when they said they would be because they're pretty good like that. But to me, a lot of time was passing between them leaving and returning. So I would sit on the bottom stairs waiting for them. And I'd start to think they've been in a crash, something terrible had happened to them, and I'd get extremely anxious, but be unable to voice it to my uncle, Hmm. who was like 10 feet away, but still I would really isolate myself in anxiety. And then as this happened a few times and I got older, I had this sense of it being like, um, well, this is a horrible, horrible experience that I'm having right now. So surely whatever happens, I'll be able to cope with it because I'm already living a horrible experience. Yeah. So that's why I kind of looked upon it as like anxiety attacks, or maybe if I was suffering so much, it might stop something happening. Mm. I can relate in a, in a way that has to do with my, my former workplace and being in the corporate world for a really long time and how I would just constantly be in this place of contemplating what could go sideways. Mm -hmm. And of course that comes with managing a good number of people and being responsible for lots and lots of money for the company and 
I was much younger at that time and really in that place of needing validation, trying to be perfect. (laughs) And so when you're in that perfection place and also validation place, you're going to be looking for things that that could break because you're going to try and plug all the holes you can before they do. Mm. Be prepared for every single scenario so that you can be the one that saves the day or fixes things, you know, whatever the thing. I just remember that the intensity of awareness around like being a firefighter. Yeah. And we're dragging our nervous system through that as if it were reality. Totally. That's where it really causes a big challenge for us because it exhausts our nervous system. It increases our anxiety. It weakens our mind and it weakens our resourcefulness to deal with whatever comes up as and when it comes up. It's a very challenging thing. And I think it's worth gaining some understanding and certainly worth gaining some tools and some ways to deal with it because it's absolutely exhausting. And it can just take the sunshine out of a really good day. And also, in those sweet moments in nature, with family, with friends, with loved ones, there's emotional nourishment there for us. Those are the things that bring us connection and strength and, and joy. And when our mind is gate crashing that with all these what if thoughts of something terrible is going to happen, we're losing the opportunity to have that sweet connection and to gratefully be able to absorb the gifts in that moment. So, from so many angles it's causing us pain and that takes us to the place of you know where does this come from where does this impending doom come from yeah and i get you know i get that sometimes it's it's something that comes along with generalized anxiety but i think it must be related as well to past trauma yeah sometimes we experience it in response to trauma where we may have been having a regular day or a good day and something shocking happened. I've experienced that a couple of key times in my life. And I had to really work with that, really, really work with that to change that back around. Some news, an accident, something intense comes in on just, even if it comes in on just a regular experience when you're at home doing something quite routine, sometimes they're the hardest ones to process because Mm. it just feels like a regular day and something comes crashing in that really knocks us sideways. Ayurveda teaches that when we're shocked, it scatters our nervous energy and it disturbs our vata, which we always talk about when vata's disturbed, it's uh, the cause of anxiety. Mm. So we need to do more to take, take care of ourselves. And also there's a bit of a cycle here that really needs some loving compassion and some tools and some support because when vata is increased, it then drives anxiety. And one of the effects of increased vata is it causes us to think things are worse than they really are. It makes us have this anticipatory fear. Yeah. So we have a shock. It shocks our nervous system. It sends us a bit sideways, out of balance. We get more anxious. We get more hypervigilant. The mind's rattled. The nervous system's under duress. And then we start scanning and and projecting and looking for, oh my God, what if this happens? Or what if I have to deal with this? And then for me, if I've had a shock and I'm trying to regain ground, the thing that goes with that in my mind is I don't feel strong enough to deal with anything else at this time. Yeah. It feels like it's too much. It's all too much. Yeah. So for that, the bark flower remedy elm is wonderful when we feel really overwhelmed and rescue remedy, as we often share, is fantastic for shock. Both of those are very easy things to add to your support package, but we have some other ideas as well. Yeah. Tapping also helps as well. I remember, it's been several years now, but I remember the the day that the policeman came to my front door to tell me that my father had passed for probably a year after that. Anytime somebody would knock on the door, I would get triggered. And through tapping and talking and um, Bach flower remedies, I was able to move through that and realize that that's a very natural thing that can happen. And 
you have an understanding of why and where, and then you just do your best to be sweet with yourself and support yourself the best way you can. Completely natural. I mean, how many of us have had to change our text tone or our ringtone on our phone because it got associated with some unwelcome news? Mm -hmm. Or the phone becomes a potential dreaded delivery system for something that we don't feel strong enough to cope with or something that we've been really worried about. Yeah. So tapping's great for all of those kind of scenarios, even just having that ringtone play on your phone where maybe something came in that caused you a bit of a, a jolt. And just tap. You don't need to use words because the trigger's already there and your energy system already is attuned to it and knows what it means. Mm -hmm. You can even just put your phone in front of you and tap. Tapping for those things, somebody coming to the door, phone ringing, post, um, anything that, that's triggering us that might be associated with unwelcome news, something we've experienced in the past, something we dread experiencing, we can use tapping to address those triggers and calm them down. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding, and it's helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It really isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com Slayer today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash Slayer. Before the break, we were talking about how tapping can help us when we have triggers and when things come up and we're really thinking that something bad is going to happen. Let's now move on to talking about micro gratitudes and watching our patterns and even some breathing practices. Yeah, micro gratitudes really help us attune to the moment when we might, for example, be having a, a nice day with loved ones and that shadow of anxiety creeps into our mind to take a deep breath and pause and remind yourself in this moment I'm grateful or just make that affirmation in this moment I'm grateful, in this moment I'm safe. You know, in this moment, as far as I know, all is well and I'm safe. In tiny doses, to ask your mind, can I relax into this minute in gratitude, just this next minute, and try and hold yourself in the present moment and be very present with who you're with and what you're experiencing. There's something um, that I read from a wonderful author called Tony Bernhard. She wrote a book called How to Be Sick which really helped me during a time of intense chronic illness. And we have a quote from her coming up from another book of hers, How to Wake Up. This teaching helps us be in the moment when we've got this feeling that we're waiting for the other shoe to drop or something could come in and turn everything on its head. And her teaching is to look at the truth, the very simple, basic truth of where you are in this moment and describe it. So it might be as simple as, you know, I'm sitting on a chair outside in the garden talking to my friend. Or I'm baking bread for my family who are going to come over for dinner later. Really simple, basic truth of where you are in that moment. What's actually known to you to focus on what's known to you in that moment rather than what the mind is trying to present to you as worst case scenarios as possibilities of things that could go wrong. There is a quote from Louise Hay that, that I used to repeat and repeat and repeat, and that's all is well and I am safe. All is well and I am safe. So similar to in this moment I'm safe or in this moment I'm grateful. She had a, a beautiful book come out years ago called How to Heal Your Life, and that was one of the affirmations inside that really stuck with me. 
And then through our work and connection with Dane here and Access Consciousness, all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. And that's something that I repeat several times throughout every single day, no matter how I'm feeling, is just opening that invitation to all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory, and sometimes you know, cracking up, saying it out loud, but inviting that energy in. Yeah, it's a healthy invitation. It's an open invitation to possibility and to presence in our life, isn't it? We all have these records that we play. We're going to talk more about this in a, in a moment. These records that play in our mind, Ayurveda talks about them as being like grooves on a record that play over and over and over. Even if we don't entirely believe that yet, it's a better track to play than playing the what if track or the what we sometimes call the jukebox of horrors. <laughs> where you know we've got these these records that want to play in our mind and they just cause us so much fear and so much anxiety and all of these affirmative statements if you're feeling really anxious you can add some tapping with those a simple way to do it is to just tap on the collarbone point you can find a diagram of the points on our website at anxietyslayer.com forward slash eft so just tapping on the collarbone point and saying in this moment I'm safe. In this moment, I'm grateful. Whatever phrasing you choose, just tapping on that collarbone point, which is on the kidney meridian, which greatly helps calm fear and anxiety. So tapping there, taking deep breaths, or you can massage the point. If you're around other people, you can just put your hand there. Let the warmth of your hand sit on that place. Nobody need to know what you're doing. Drop your shoulders, take some breaths, and tell yourself, as far as I know, in this moment, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And I just need to be here. I need to be present in this moment. I need to be grateful for this moment and not let our mind try and cling to it and make it an anxious permanence. I have a good friend who lives out in Colorado. She lives in Vail, and she is a, an avid skier and, and um, as you can imagine, living in the mountains. Uh, She's very active lifestyle. It's the choice to live there. Needless to say, last week she was skiing and tore her ACL. And it's going to be probably a fairly long recovery. That's a, a pretty big surgery and, and recovery time. And the thing that I love so much about her is no matter what happens in her life, she comes from the place of it's going to be okay. Like it's, it's a bummer. It's painful. I wish it hadn't happened. But I'm going to be okay. And it's going to be fine. And she's always been like that. <laughs> and I just admire that so much. And it's not that she hasn't had all kinds of things happen in her life like we all do. It's just she sees the glass as half full. It's just her way. And it helps her move through her life with much more grace and ease. Yeah. What a blessed makeup. No doubt. It's a real gift to have that kind of mentality. I've encountered people like that, and I'm very inspired by them. Mm -hmm. My nature takes quite a bit more work to feel like that, but that's okay too. Yeah, mine too. But on the days where I can be more like my friend, boy, those days are great. <laughs> yeah. Because we all have those days too. We do where we can be lighter, we can experience lightness of being. We do, and we need to log them and, and, and know they're there and remember them. I always write them down, even if it's just a sentence or a photo in a journal, to remember those moments of sweet times and, uh, and of blessings and of company, of good things, comfortable days, whatever it is, because the mind, when it's out of balance, will tell us we're not having it. Yeah, The mind will tell us that everything's difficult all the time. It will just gloss over the whole experience. So we need to be a curator for ourselves of the good experiences. And, and also, if we're having a day where we've coped better, we've tried something and it's helped, we're being resourceful, note that too. Mm -hmm. So that when it comes around again, you remember, oh, I did that. I've shared this many times on the podcast that I have a journal, an app called Day One on my phone. And every day it shows me on this day, so many years ago. And so many times I'll see I'd been in a difficult place and I was really trying to 
go deeper with my meditation or I was reading something beautiful and uplifting. I was trying something. And if I hadn't written it down, I would not give myself the credit for those efforts. Mm -hmm. I would remember the difficulties, but I wouldn't remember my attempts at maintaining my spiritual practice or taking care of myself or trying to support others. And there'll be days when I've recorded I was completely falling apart. And that's fine too. That's all part of my experience and my life. We all have that mix. But I wouldn't get, I've given myself credit for the attempts I'd made in maintaining my spiritual practice and self care if I hadn't written them down because my mind isn't going to hold that for me. So, really important to log the good, log your courage, and log your attempts at supporting yourself. And also to be aware and to watch your thought patterns. Because whatever we frequently think about and ponder upon, that becomes the inclination of our mind. And that's a kind of a paraphrase of, of a quote from Tony Bernard from How to Wake Up. It's like my, my friend Molly that I was just talking about is constantly thinking about life is good. Things are always going to work out. Things always work out for me. That's the inclination of her mind. Many of us, many of our listeners, uh, can come from that other, the other place, thinking about, uh-oh, what's going to happen next, or what's going to happen now, or what if my anxiety comes back, or what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. And we put ourselves through so much pain and sorrow that hasn't even happened. But our body doesn't know any better. No, we've put ourselves through it. As far as our nervous system's concerned, we're putting ourselves through the whole thing. It doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination. So we're putting ourselves through intense suffering. And of course, Ayurveda teaches this too. If we think fearful thoughts, the mind becomes more fearful. And that's not an easy thing to change, but we can change it with practice. And, you know, based on everything that we just said just a couple of minutes ago, it just takes practice. Bust your mind. Uh uh, I'm going to change this pattern when that comes up. There's lots of other choices that you can make. And breathing also helps. You can get so much help from a breathing practice. Yeah, because it retrains us. This is what we're looking to do. Is you know, we're training ourselves for the horrors, but we need to train ourselves for regular, peaceful, comfortable, calm, aspirational living. And breathing can help us do that. There's a direct relationship between our breath and our thoughts, the rate of our breath and our thoughts. When we're anxious, we tend to have our shoulders up and we breathe this kind of ragged, shallow breathing, and it churns the mind up more. So we have an access point to our thoughts via our breath. When we learn to control our breath, for even brief periods, it sends a message of calm to our mind. And this is called in yoga and in Ayurveda, pranayama, which means to control. Prana is the breath, the life air. And yama means to, to control. So we have these ancient teachings for this purpose of helping us calm our mind. And when we practice over time, it conditions the body to be more relaxed and less anxious. So we're training ourselves to feel less generally anxious anyway, but also to be able to cope better with whatever life may bring us. And I was listening yesterday to a really great interview with Dr. Andrew Weil. Do you know him? I do. Yeah, he's been around for so long, hasn't he? And uh, currently he's giving some really great interviews. and. He's been teaching a lot about anti-inflammatory diets and general things we can do for our well-being, well worth a listen, particularly for those struggling with health anxiety. It's always helpful to have proactive things to try to look after our health. But he said that whenever he works with a client, he recommends very simple four, seven, eight breathing. And he credits that back to pranayama and to yogic breathing. But very simply, what he recommends, and it takes just 30 seconds twice a day, is that you take a deep breath in for the count of four, hold it for the count of seven, and then blow it out with some energy for the count of eight. 
and you repeat that four times, four cycles. And it just takes half a minute. And he recommends to all his clients that they do that twice a day. Because he's worked with so, so many people over the years, he's a very interesting and experienced person to listen to. And he shares how a month or two of doing that, he sees definite changes in stress and anxiety with his clients. And it's so easy to do, and it takes very little time at all. Yeah. Absolutely everybody can do this, and you can even, even if you think, oh, that's not true, or that would help, just do it. Do it anyway. This is why it's great to have role models and, and experts to listen to who we respect. You know, the guy's a very experienced doctor and teacher. He's approaching 80 years of age, and he knows a lot about how to keep the body and mind healthy. And he's very medically qualified as well. So we can, you know, take some advice from him. And this is a very simple thing to, to bring into our day. And if you hear him speak about that simple practice, he's got some very strong claims about that versus medication. Our mind will tell us it's too simple. Our mind might feel anxious around breathing. But this is such a quick and simple practice. Is worth a try, even if we're not too happy with breathing practices. This is one that you can do that doesn't really focus on your breath too much. You're quite actively directing your breath, and it is just for a few seconds, a few times a day. Will you run through it one more time so that our listeners can follow along with us? Yeah. You breathe in for a count of four. Hold your breath for a count of seven. And breathe out with some energy for a count of eight. And you repeat that four times, four cycles. 30 seconds, twice a day. And over time, we're conditioning our parasympathetic nervous system to come in. It stops us being stuck in fight or flight. And we're telling our mind, it's okay, I've got this. Have some peace, let's slow it down. Just have some peace. And then this segues into the importance of leaning in to your life. And Brene Brown has a great quote that, where she says, avoidance will make you feel less vulnerable in the short run, but it will never make you feel less afraid. Yeah. And this is why we lean in. This is why we practice presence and sitting in the moment and mindfulness where we drop our shoulders, take a breath, and be with whatever is happening. And we can all build strength in this practice. We just learn to sit with what is and calm the chatter of fear around it. And yeah, it does take practice, but that's what we're here for. Yeah, and it's the most valuable practice. Sometimes You know, you read quotes from people that say, you know, I just hit a day where I was just sick of my own rubbish, you know, and Mm -hmm. then I decided to take action. And we have that threshold. And sometimes we need to ask with anxiety, how bad does this need to be before I'm going to try and do something for myself? Do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because even in trying to do something to help ourselves, that's healing. And Dr. Weil, in his latest interview, is talking about that as well. He said he's seen patients turn things around with their health just because they made a commitment to themselves. They've not been making the changes long enough to see any definite physiological changes from what they're doing, whether it's their diet or moving more, whatever it is. That comes later, but it's that initial commitment of, I'm suffering too much. I need to try and help myself. And it's a very powerful thing when we're proactive about our own health and our own mental well-being because we can get this learned helplessness where we feel that we need to be given something from outside to help us. But he and many others teach that when we make that decision to do something, today I'm going to start doing this for myself to help myself, that is a very powerful healing move that starts to change things. Just from that heart decision, it starts to change things. Mm. 
We don't know what the future will bring, but we won't help ourselves handle it if we're already exhausted from living out our fears in our mind and in our nervous system. We deserve better. We can do better. And practicing presence is going to make all the difference. Practice being with what is. And you can do it. Yeah, just taking a breath and being with whatever's going on. And we build strength by that practice, by learning to sit with the good and the challenging and just breathe and hold ourselves as steady as we can. We build strength and we build self-respect. Also really important to challenge our what-if thoughts. And one simple way to do this is when the mind says, what if this happens, to just throw back at the mind, what if it's going to be okay? We might not know for sure it is. We don't like uncertainty. But uh, what if it's going to be okay sends a completely different message to our nervous system than what if all our worst fears come true. Right. And there's a chance that everything is okay. Right? Yeah, we're better served by just staying where we're not getting zapped. Exactly. In our nervous system. And we've often shared in the past that saying where you, where you break down the letters of fear as false evidence appearing real. Even just a tap on your collarbone and say that, this is false evidence appearing real. And I'm just staying with what I can see in front of my nose right now. I wonder who to credit that to. That's something I I remember learning maybe even before I met you, Ananga, and I don't know where it came from. Yeah. It's so powerful and potent. It really, really is. I think I heard it on an NLP training when my daughter was very, very young, and I, I don't know who to credit either, but very helpful just to, you know, if your mind tries to serve an ace over the net, hit it back. What if mm-hmm. it's going to be okay? What if this is just false evidence appearing real? Yeah. Chuck it back, challenge it, practice, and see how that changes in your body, how that changes in your, in your physiology, and then just bring in that tapping in, tapping on the collarbone, and longer tapping. We have many guided tapping sessions available. There's a guided session in our free course, which you can find at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Somebody in our group just yesterday or this morning, I can't remember which, shared that she uses that tapping session regularly and it really helps bring her some peace. So that's there. Just go get the free course. There's some guided relaxations in there as well. And we also have many guided tapping sessions on our Patreon. I think there's about 20 on there and they're all tagged under tapping sessions. So you can look through. We have things like tapping for when it all feels too much, um, tapping when anxious thoughts wake us in the middle of the night, tapping when we feel worried about our health. We have so many guided tapping sessions. So if you'd like to learn more about tapping, but also have the support of somebody that's experienced in tapping guide you through and you can just follow along, that's available too. Thanks for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We're so grateful that you come back week after week. And if you love our podcast, consider becoming a patron and you'll get over 150 guided relaxations, tapping sessions that Ananga just mentioned, Ayurvedic teachings for calming anxiety, and so much more. You can visit patreon.com slash anxiety slayer and everything will be right there before you so that you can make an informed choice.